Hello everybody, it's Air Wolf and it's Friday night. That's right, it's Friday night dice. Dungeons and Dragons crews at it again. Uh, minus one uh, player right now in tea tonight because he uh, is getting the uh, COVID vaccine today. So he's going to feel a little under the weather, so he decided to uh, not participate tonight. But that doesn't mean <clears throat> you shouldn't go out there and get the vaccine. If you haven't been vaccinated, please go out there and get the vaccine. Uh, whether it's Pfizer, it doesn't matter. Just go out there and get it, all right? If anything, if you're anti-vax, whatever, look, the proof is in the pudding. Anybody who's contracted the coronavirus after getting the shot has certain severely mild conditions, like really mild conditions compared to what you normally have. I had I had the coronavirus like way back last year. It was two weeks of awful misery, me and my now wife, so... Um, it was just horrible. And having mild symptoms of only like a day or two versus two freaking weeks of it, go and get the damn shot. Okay, everybody, please just go do it. Um, anyways, off that spot, so we're back again. Uh, Friday Night Dice, the Lost Mind of the Delaware series. We're going to bring in the guys in just a second. Uh, a couple of our crews went a little late tonight, uh, so we're going to try to get into it very soon. Um, a couple of quick announcements. Don't forget again that, uh, the uh, this side of the series, season two here, I guess we could call it, uh, is starting to wind down. Uh, the Lost Mine of Fendelver, hosted by Leo. We only got about one, maybe two up, like two more episodes left. But again, Bailey will be taking over uh, for where Leo's going to leave off. And <clears throat> from what I could tell, it's going to be like everybody is going to be changing over, uh, except for my character, if my character lives, because I think we have to fight this uh, dragon that we're going to see on the screen here in a second. Uh, <laughs> we're still gonna fight that dragon soon. Uh, so if my guy survives, if uh, Ryan survives, we'll be moving on with Ryan. But I believe everybody else is likely to be changed. So without further ado, I'm going to be bringing in the rest of the Friday Night Dice cast. And there we go. Hello, everybody. Hey, how's it going? Howdy. Ah, it's good. Hello. Good. I'm gonna switch on over to the Friday Night Dice screen. Oh, that was a big joke. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me try that again. There we go. Ooh. Ooh, Bailey's going to be about an hour late. Oh, that's mm. rough. Interesting. Well, uh, we're all here, so let's proceed. And we'll have two players that need to be controlled. Who would like to take control of the wizard as well as the artificer? Uh, I'll take the wizard. Saber knows what to do with artificers. I have no idea. <laughs> I Sounds guess like I can try. Fit. I got a lot of stuff on my screen, but I'll try. Uh, All right, oh, you want me to do it? I'll do it. Just tell me what to do. I don't care. <laughs> nah, I could try to do it. Um, let me just get rid of some stuff from my screen here. Uh, dude, uh, Rigel used both of his portents last time. Did he? Uh... On the previous Probably in that battle with uh, our uh, our friend, Master or Blades or whatever. Yeah, that guy was tough. Okay, so let's take a look. Oh, so take a second, take a look. Whoever's controlling uh, the artificer, take a look. Go ahead. Uh, where is your artificer? I got a good one lined up. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> I still want to stay and fight, but... So, just for Bailey, hey guys, welcome back to Friday Night Dice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be your host, uh, your DM. And uh, last time where we left off, there was the battle at Ponyberry. You guys had fought Sudden Warforged emerging from a portal from beyond. It's been a year since the Giants last attacked the Sword Coast and Warforged starting showing up, as well as other factions from Eberron, through these strange portals. And you were lucky enough to come across one yourself. You defeated the uh, Lord of Blades, Master of Blades, Lord of Blades. Very difficult opponent, but you handled him well. There was a noise coming from a nearby well. You guys decided to investigate. Upon descending into the well, you've come across 
clearly the den of vampire. Yeah. Within the den, you the have discovered that there are not one, but possibly three vampire or vampire kin um, entering the room. Uh, one of them, one of these uh, coffins opened up. One of the child vampire uh, came in, and uh, the mother vampire clearly was not pleased of having unannounced guests. A quick battle ensued. However, not long after the battle, uh, spirit guardians were cast and uh, some other spells as well. A large thump could be heard from the coffin above a large metal iron cast coffin. The lid suddenly flying open, hitting the ceiling. And if you recall, it it was a dome ceiling with a very nice plaster sort of fresco of what appeared to be water deep long ago, though, before even humans. The plaster fell to the floor. The iron cask lid fell to the side. Floating out of the casket is a rather upset looking uh, creature with pale skin and pointy teeth. Imposing in nature, he floats up out of the coffin. How dare you enter my domain, my home? I will give you one chance to live. Leave now or die, he says. What do you do? I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah, we're going to back off. Oh, well... (laughs) Pardon our intrusion. We were just walked in and we got attacked, so we didn't know. So we're gonna back off. Why don't you have your your mates back off, and we'll back off, and everybody will back off. So you're the one saying that you were accepting his offer of uh, retreat. Well, I, it's my turn, I believe. That's where we left is it? off. Yes, yes, your turn. Well, Victor's turn is actually up first. I believe we ended on his turn. Am I right? It's Victor's turn, and yeah. Yeah, he kind of he kind of pushed the coffin off of him to get up and talk to us. So I don't know yes. what part of the action he and, had to do with that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's basically a free action, just his sheer strength. It's quite impressive the way the lid flew off. He floats up. His turn is actually now. So he is offering as a reaction, you, Volt, you have spoken up and responded to him, correct? Yes. Now, in your speech about how you had no um, intention of starting a fight and that you were, in fact, attacked, he's thinking about your offer of leaving. However, this is in the heat of moment. Like, this is happening all in a split second. And as you're speaking, Volt, your character, you're the one that said it, so I'm asking you, is there any part in the back of your mind that your cleric is thinking, we'll leave now, but me and my buddies are going to come back and stomp you and your stupid vampire family? Is there any chance that your character, because I know you talked about it just on Discord. Come on, you know what the answer is. You know is there the any chance that you're thinking me and my buddies backed by my deity Zeus are going to come back here in real quick time and take care of you? Is that fair? Uh, yeah, it's fair. So you're being a little bit deceptive in one way. I'm going to need you to roll a deception check with advantage, however. And it will be contested by his meager passive insight, which is only 12. What do you want me to roll? So here's what I want you to do. Because there is that thought in the back of your mind, and he is reading your um, body language and your tone, and he's seeing if there's any chance that you're thinking in the back of your head that we're going to come back and kill everybody in this room. I need you to roll a deception check with advantage. The DC is 12, his passive insight. Big roll. I got a minus two. No, no. Uh, I believe in you. Yeah, you can believe in me all you want. Yeah, but you get, you get, I'm rolling. You got to roll a uh, 15 or higher. Oh, that was disadvantage. No, uh, advantage. So. No, advantage. Okay. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. My highest one was a 12. Was a twelve, so minus two is a ten. 
Very well. I can sense in your words ill intent. Family, brace yourself for a fight to the death. And he is going to use his action. And I let the dice roll this. I had, this was like a 50-50 pretty much. It sounds like he is going to stay for a fight. And so are you. He is going to use his fly speed, which is quite unusual for a vampire. He is going to fly right around. So there is an attack of opportunity possibly. No, I don't think so. I think he did it perfect. He's going to be in the well, and uh, Ketvia, I believe, is down there as well. Maybe five feet up, I think. Is that right? Something like yes, that? Yes, he's still on the rope five feet up. Right. Ketvia sees this finely dressed gentleman, extremely intimidating in nature, simply look up to the open sky above, and you can see his skin. It's starting to get hit with some of the rays coming down. He doesn't care. He's He's... He's just walking in. And suddenly, in the distance, you hear, Ah. after a moment of him looking up to the sky. And that is what he's going to do with his action. Can you make a wisdom save? Uh, Yes, for Spear Guardians, correct? Yes. All right, here we go. Wolfie don't like that. Ooh, he has succeeded. However, we'll say due to the sun rays beating down on his face, he takes four points of radiant damage just by standing there. That's fair. So go ahead and roll the damage for uh, Spirit Guardians, and he'll take half. Uh, I gotta remember what it is. (laughs) Uh, You can just roll again. It's fine. It's D8s. Yeah, I don't know how many, though. Uh, Spirit Guardians, 3 d eight. So he's already taken four from the sun, and Oof. he takes Ooh, 21. Nice roll. Wow. Takes wow. 10. Very good. Nice roll. But does he have to do another con save? Uh, no. This was another okay. feature that he is using to summon in the distance. Okay. Volt, your turn is up first. Quite an interesting battle we have here. What yeah, do you do? A little bit too much, I think. Um, so is he in range of Ray? Sure. I mean, if Ray moves, is he going to get an opportunity to attack is what I'm asking. Um, how high was Ray flying? He, he, was all, he was on top as far as he could get. Okay, then no, he's fine. All right, then Ray is going to move in um, to... There, and then he's going to move out to there, and I am going to attack this one with my with my mace. Uh, which one? The one in front of you? Uh, well, the uh, the the woman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Her. Yeah. She actually bit you that last round. So yeah. You only get so... a little payback. Little little play, payback, hopefully. Oh, fuck. She dodges. Your, one? She that? dodges your mace, electrified with radiant energy this time, and it's four and a fucking two. Are you kidding me? Is Sweet that with the plus right? one from? Uh, there's a plus yeah. one from flanking, but I don't know if that's I, enough. I, 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 oh yeah, so oh, it's plus two with flanking, still. Still a miss, unfortunately, as she yeah, dodges. I, I rolled a two and a four. Okay, and for my bonus action, um, we are going to put up the spiritual hammer. I knew you would. And let me see if I can find it. Two, go. Oops. And we'll try to whack her. And was this the one you uh, help action with your owl, or was that uh, Victor? No, it, it doesn't. No, I, I helped action her. Okay. But 
I missed. I rolled a four and a two. Oh, oh right, right, right. Sorry. All right, here we go. Normal roll. All right, that's it. I'm 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 turning off these fucking dice. This is not a good start. Roll. Natural this one. Then you roll a d4. As long as it's not a one, you don't hit little friend behind you with a wild swing. Okay, this is ridiculous. Every time I roll these dice, they're they're horrible. I mean, we're just starting out brilliantly, aren't we? Oh, not a good start. You swing wildly in front of you and your momentum actually spins you around. Go ahead and roll damage on little friend. Uh, uh, that's uh, it's only one D8. Now watch this. This is going to be an 8. That's well total damage. Yeah. Uh, little friend. Yep. I was like, oh, you know, let me use let me use the computer because it's you know, it might be okay. But the algorithms they, they failed you, friend. I and thought it'd be good for the turn, uh, Volt. No, I think I'm done. Interesting, sir. Sean, you're up with Rigel, followed by your own character. What do you do? Okay. Uh, so things just got a little out of hand. Let's kill her. I think it's time for us to slow things down a little. Ooh. Very interesting. However, it is quite a crowded battlefield. Where are you going to place this 40-foot cube? Uh, it, well, it doesn't really matter. I can choose which creatures are and aren't affected. Oh, that's right, yes. So this this is your choice, then? Up to six creatures, right? Yeah, but it's just going to be the three vampires. Sounds like a plan. I need to roll some wisdom saving throws, or they're going to be slowed! I'm going to roll three d20s in order. It'll be Victor, followed by the wife and the child. Oh, Victor, let me just see here, is going to... He is going to... to uh, let's see here. Does he have legendary resistance? He is going to succeed on this savings throw using legendary resistance. He is not slowed. The wife is not slowed, and the child is slowed. Okay, then. Uh, and we're going to push the child. Very well. And Telekinetic bonus action push, and he has failed. He has been pushed. All right, well, that was a turn. Uh, so if you want to take a swipe at the child. No, you can't. It was push. Right. Well then, let's see what Adrian can do. Uh, disengage. Mm, no. First, I'm going to booming blade. Fourteen uh, is actually that, a hit with your flank attack. That is wrong. That's all wrong. It's all so very wrong. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, that is a thirteen. That is a miss, unfortunately. Yeah, so I thought it was fourteen get, to hit. You get your D four. Mm. Or, or what is flank? Flank is a plus one. Oh, never mind. So it was a total of 13. It's a miss, unfortunately, as you stab out with your rapier. Oh you God. look around to your allies, worried looks on everyone's faces. What do you do next? Okay. Well, uh, uh, disengage and hide behind the cat. <laughs> <laughs> 
And if that's the end of your turn, we got Ketvia. <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, that's not good because now he's right next to right next to Kefia. He is mm. in partial sunlight. <laughs> okay. Um. Who? I guess everybody doesn't have uh, temporary hit points, huh? Uh. Yeah. Uh, except Ryan. Yeah. Okay. Well, if how what's the range of it? Ten, ten, ten feet. I'm trying to look it up. Uh, let's see. I end of Catvia's turn. That this has to happen. Right. Um, oh, Victor should be on this side of Catvia. My mistake. Yes, the well is over here. So uh, yeah, that, that makes more sense. Um, what is it? What is it under? A little friend. It's yeah. it's its own. Uh, we have it as a separate stat block. Uh, it's a under oh. friends and summons. Oh, it's under there. God, I got I got <laughs> I got like three character sheets already in front of me. Paul did. Oh my god. Do you want to take? I could. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. All right. So did you do jukebox? Okay. Okay. It's its own action. Is that what it is? Uh, yes, it's the, it's well, it's your bonus action at the end of your turn. You said, Sean, it's the bonus action at the end of your turn. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, so Kefi is right there on a rope, five feet up. Victor is standing there below, looking up to the sky. Is here. Immediately after he spent a moment looking up, you hear howling in this far oh. distance. You're not sure yeah. how close. But... Is it Wolfie? <laughs> Yeah, Wolfie's up there, isn't he? Wolfie's up there. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. He's up there. Uh, no, he's the only one up there actually right now. All right, so Kefia unfortunately doesn't have any melee range abilities except for the goddamn wooden stick, which I guess is a good thing, right? Um, you know, use web. Ah, uh, yeah, true. I would like to point out that Ketvia is currently hanging off of a rope. Well, Kefia would drop down off the rope. He's only like, what, five, ten feet up from it? So he could just drop down. Because he has a strength for it, right? Yeah, he could drop down ten five feet. Five feet, yeah. Five, ten feet, whatever it is. Without taking damage. And then... Oh my god, where is that staff? Uh, the spider stuff? Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to look for it. I don't even see it on the sheet. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So staff has 10 charges. Would yeah, use I see the 10 charges. But fuel, blah, blah, blah. So DC. Okay. So we'll it's cast. Key. So I guess we can cast web on these. You just have. It's just below absorb elements on his character sheet. Oh, okay. So he'll cast a web with the staff on the. Table. Yeah. Anyways, if you're trying to cast web, I believe it's a twenty foot cube. That's... Yep. Okay. Yeah. So it'll just be these two, and wherever it extends up from there. So twenty foot cube, so fifteen, twenty, so if we go about this way. Roughly about that size is twenty foot. Roughly. Maybe that's too big, but Okay, well either be, way I'll be going this way with it, not not that way. Either way it can catch every creature on the battlefield. We don't want to do that. No, I'm doing it right here. Oops. There you go. That's better. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Ah. It's actually. Two where he is. Web. Sea white uh, suddenly appear in a 20 foot cube, making it difficult terrain. Mm. 
Okay. Um, Victor looks down at the webs and just looks up at you, Kefia, with a devilish smile. And uh, did you want any movement for Kefia before I use the little friend to pump out um, some temp no, HP? No, because I don't want to vote uh, tax of opportunity against both of them, really. So... Well, Kefia's Probably a wise choice, as he is concentrating on the spell, correct? Yeah, uh, okay. Oh, he's yeah. going down? Well, he would have dropped on the ground, then cast a... Uh, can't cast a staff, then. Fair enough. And then little friend, go ahead. And uh, I believe that is in the little friend handout in Friends and Familiar, if you want to use that um, ability to grant temp HP. Yeah, it's just going to roll up here. Hey, is that right? Oh, my God. Usually looks different when he does yeah. that. Yeah. If it is 8 plus 5, yeah. It is That's a D8 plus 5. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there you go. Eleven. That's the same thing, so it's 8. Yeah, yeah, so we'll it's go eight. with 8, because that's the... Oh, no, sorry, 11. That's more, yeah. <laughs> hmm? We'll go with 11. That's I'll fine. take 11. <laughs> All right. You're going to need it. Everybody gets 11, then. Everybody but... Uh, and if Ketfia that's the end of your like turn, that. then, Ketfia, you are done, and... The child and mother are up next, and the child, he is going to make uh, or attempt to make a dexterity save as these webs, and he fails. He is webbed. Oh, poor kid. He's webbed and slowed. And oh, shoot. Doesn't he, <laughs> he, does doesn't it. he take damage from Spirit Guardians? <laughs> yeah. Is that at the start of his turn, Spirit Guardians? Yeah. 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 I should know this, casting it several times. Go ahead and roll. 3d8 radiant. Ooh, and he takes 12. And as soon as the radiant damage hits him a second time, you can see that uh, the wounds, the cuts on his skin, they're uh, not healing up as you would normally see. And uh, he's able to do his save, so then now he can he use his action to try to break out with a strength check? Uh, yeah. I think slow, yeah. Yeah, he, what... he can do that. All right. And the slow doesn't have any effect on that, I believe, so he is going to try to make a strength. Urgh, strong. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Although I would have liked to point out, even if he had, his speed is currently halved. He is in difficult terrain and i believe still uh, slowed <laughs> after another failed guardians check. also restricts movement this kid is not oh, having a good day and as, soon as, space. and as soon as these um as soon as these uh spirit guardians hit him and the child he kind of reels back and he's clearly trapped and slowed by these 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 magics the two parents look upon you with just anger-filled, rage-filled eyes. And the mother lashes out to you, Volt. And she is going to try to smack you. How dare you strike my child? And she hits you with a sharp thud. However, no damage as she is going to grapple you. Automatically grappled. She pulls you in and she is going to try to bite your neck again uh, for the second time. Don't I get don't I get a reaction mm, or something? Not on a vampire. No. You do not, unfortunately. Here comes the bite as she reels in. Oh, but it's not quite enough. And she just misses as you dodge her with your shield. You kind of and impose it at the last second. So she takes, hold on, she takes uh, 3d8, doesn't she? Oh, yeah, you got to remind me that at the start of their turns, because I'm yeah. going to forget every time. <laughs> so. And then I go into my Ooh. long monologue. 16 points of damage. Ooh, so she was struck right before she missed you with 16. And same thing, you can see the wounds on her skin from various damage sources. They don't appear to be healing. And the end of their turn. Finally, you got a little bit of good uh, rolls heading your way. Rayon. Mm -hmm. This is a big battle. I'm not going to lie. What do you do? It's, it might be a little too big. We'll see what happens. If we all die, we all die. <laughs> Go ahead. Rayon. No, and, and then it's campaign. <laughs> yeah, then it's Bailey's campaign. 
Bailey's yeah. going to log in in about 20 minutes. Uh, okay. Hey, so in your campaign now. I, I, I just, it's just for the record, I tried to leave, right? I just want everybody. <laughs> you sure. did, you did yeah. what yep. you thought was best. You also did what I suspected you might do, so I had to throw in a little bit of a dice roll there. But you did have an advantage, and here we are. Rayon, what do you do? <coughs> Alrighty, well, I'm going to whip around this way behind uh, Mommy there. So I get a plus one to my attack, and I'm going to do Guardian of the Master and try to smash her in the back of the head. Good time for a crit. Uh, 16 to hit? 15 is 16. just a hit with your plus one. Whew. Okay. As you strike from behind, taking advantage of the flanking opportunity. And I will definitely gonna, damage. definitely going to put in a spell slot for this for a smite. Because the numbers don't look good. Alright, so guarding the master damage will be uh, 10 slashing damage. Followed okay, by 10 magical slashing plus. Plus the divine smite. These are undead, right? Yeah. Oh, of course. Yep. <laughs> I would say so. For additional 9 radiant damage. <gasps> oh. <clears throat> Not great, but 9 is still radiant damage, and she, she could feel the pain slashing and radiant at the same time. She spins around and gives you a look with those red eyes. All right. And then second attack, Guardian of the Master. It's on your turn. Oh, what about your pup? So here's what happens with your pup. Oh, sorry. I keep forgetting you got extra I got attack. Attacks 24 now, is so a hit. Roll for damage. Hit 19 I know. I keep forgetting. Damage. Sorry, 12 slash damage. I'm going to And, uh, yeah, um, let's see. What are you at for spell slots remaining, Rayon? I got us, I got us level two. I'm saving that for the big guy. Um. Ah, uh, that's all you got left is one second? I got one second level slot. That's it. Ooh, so if that's the case, is that the end of your turn? Um. Not in a good spot for that move. I think so. I mean, I don't have a bonus action, unfortunately. Oh, wait, I already used favorite. No, I haven't used that. Yeah, I guess that's my yeah. end of my turn because I don't have a bonus action I can use. If that's the end of your turn, in an instant, we are back to Victor. Very quickly um, in the turn order. Hold on. Ooh, there's 12. Uh, 17 points of damage. What's that from, sorry? Uh, the Spirit Guardians. Oh, shoot. I keep forgetting about that. Oh, that was a good roll. How much was it, sorry? 17. Ooh, 17 points of damage. Mm. Wow. And if he ends his turn in this corridor for a little bit more damage, so just remind me of that. I don't think he's going to be doing that, but he does have to make a save versus Webb, as he is five feet come webbing. He looks down and... Ooh! Dexterity. He is stuck in the webbing. No. He's going to use his second <laughs> oh, legendary on. resistance. Only one remaining, however. You have successfully burned two of those. Nothing wrong with that. He is not in the webbing. However, he does look around the room. He sees the artificer. He's got very warm, charming eyes. He thinks, no, not him. He looks to be a half-elf. He looks through the rest of the room. Volt, he sees, the cleric. He thinks in his mind, I despise what he's doing to my family. However, he also appears to be half-elf. Not him, he says. He looks towards Rigel, the wizard. He takes one step forward, two steps 
forwards. And that's he all looks, he can take. He looks uh, deeply, he take- that's all he needs. He looks deeply into Rigel's eyes. Yeah. You, human, he says, look into my eyes deeply as his gaze, his eyes turn into those like, <laughs> and Rigel, I need you to make a stand by. You t- a savings throw versus charm, and it is a wisdom save. I I have, I have one question. Mm-hmm. He seems to on his sheet. He seems to have tides of chaos. Does he? Um. No, because that only occurs on a natural one. I don't think he can. Maybe he does. Let me think. But, well, he has the the tides of chaos for advantage. Yeah, let me just uh, pull that up real quick because uh, I created it, but I honestly don't remember. <laughs> Here it is, wild magic. Let's take a look together as we scroll down. Yes, Tides of Chaos. You can minus advantage on one attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Ah, so is it marked on his sheet that he has one? It is. Oh, oh boy, do you choose, Sean? This is your choice on, on Inti's behalf to use Tides of Chaos. Uh, yes. I think you would. Anyway. And what is his I modifier? Would. I don't believe his wisdom is very good, but he is proficient being a wizard. What is it? it? It's a plus one. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, that was uh, just so with the advantage. It's an eight. Oh. Oh. Your uh, sixth level divination wizard looks deeply into Victor's eyes. Do you want me and to he... roll a wild magic surge? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, let me grab my book. Don't roll it yet. Okay. I'll... He looks well, right there deep... on Here's page, two so... things happen. Rigel looks deeply into Victor's eyes, and he appears to be in some sort of trance, listening to Victor's next very carefully. But you also see wild magic surge from Rigel's body. In all directions, and uh, let me just turn to page 104, I think it is. Stand by. Yeah. It, it is. Go ahead and roll the D100 for a wild magic. 31. 31. Oh, my. Oh, you no! are transmitted <laughs> to the national plane until oh. the – oh, it's only his next turn, but that is a yeah. very fortunate roll because you were transported yeah. to the astral plane until the end of your next turn, after what? which time you return to the space – you previously occupied. Wow. Okay, that's going on the highlight. <laughs> Disappears. Victor does... looks shocked. This this has never happened. And I've seen <coughs> a thousand years worth of events. This has never happened. And he looks quite frustrated and angry. And that is going to be the end of his turn. That's well amazing. Done. Things Vault started really poorly with your first attempt at it, but things since are starting to look a little bit better. What do you do with your turn? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna send Ray in, right? Take advantage, and then back cap. Okay. And I am gonna try to hit her with the booming blade. Okay. With the mace. So whatever these rolls are, it's going to be a plus seven. And the mace is 2d6 versus undead. Yes. Come on. There we go. 15 plus seven. I'm sure that's a hit. Easy hit. Roll for damage. And that would be 2d6, right? Yep. Plus Bludgeoning plus as well as radiant. Plus 1d8. Uh, no. Blue it's blue it's uh, oh yeah, you're right. Booming blade. Uh, eight points of damage. Uh, do you get a modifier on top of that? Don't you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, your strength modifier. Yeah, I do. Dude. Thanks for reminding me. Four. So it's uh, is it three plus one, or is it just four? Four. Very well. So it's 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 uh one d six plus four. So so that's uh, twelve points total. The mace connects. Radiant energy pulls from air. Copper, I think it's described as. Maybe brass. I can't remember. 
But anyways, uh, anything else on your yeah. turn? Taking a shot with the... Uh, let's see, what do I got here? Uh, you know, with my... Uh, Spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon. Plus eight to this. Uh, yeah, that's a hit. That's an 18. And Easy this, hit with the force damage coming. And this is going to be a plus four, whatever. Woo! Another 12 Ooh, points. Max back. damage as the spiritual hammer. First she takes the mace, and then she takes the hammer. And she's looking back at Rayon, and she looks back at you with sort of a dazed look. As she is not in the red, but um, the damage oh is starting to take toll. And the radiant damage is not helping her regenerate. Anything else on your turn? Uh, I think I am pretty much done. And that is definitely a much better uh, round for you, sir. Hello. Oh, geez. Hey, <laughs> oh, thank you God. Interesting. Things I did say it was going to be interesting. Go up. ahead and fill in, Bailey. So we tried to leave, but the vampire said, no, you're going to come back and kill us all. So he basically didn't let us leave. So we're in a fight. Well, hold on uh, now. It wasn't like that. You rolled for it. it I rolled had a for little... it. And he you also rolled. wasn't wrong. That was just the abridged version, wrong. okay? <laughs> yeah. This is, this is like the, the cliff notes here. Sure. Yeah. So <laughs> I did roll for it. Uh, uh, advantage. And as usual, I rolled a two and a four. Um, <laughs> so then we went into combat and I think I rolled another two and a four so, and, so we, he, uh, uh, and then he and hit little then, friend <coughs> yeah yep. and I hit little friend and then uh, Sean went and I think he rolled very shitty as well I and like basically it's been that way so this is like really the first round you just got here where we where we hit and you uh, threw a web. Yeah, you have a web currently okay. on the baby kid there. That's what the yellow box is, and... which we had to force another <laughs> uh, legendary resistance out of the big guy. And yep, he moved to the opposite side of you. So he only has one legendary resistance left as far as we know. And So I have a question, and I'm afraid of the answer. Where the heck is Rigel? Uh, so oh. let me. Oh, so Rigel. Rigel. <laughs> <laughs> so so Victor used the vampire charm on Rigel. I used Tides of Chaos uh, to give him advantage on the roll because his save is like a plus one. He still failed, but the wild magic from the Tides of Chaos sent him to the astral plane for a round. <laughs> okay. Just, just true huh. Friday night dice fashion there, which may or may not break the charm. I think if you're on and, a different plane of existence, it typically breaks most things. But anyway, let's continue. And uh, oh, and uh, the vampire called some werewolves. They're they're on their way. So uh, the wolves, or, or wolves lovely his brothers, yeah. one or the other. We don't know which. Oh, and that reminds me actually. Thanks for reminding me about Wolfie up above. At the end of your last turn, Rayon, I forgot to mention that. Uh, Wolfie starts barking down the, and uh, you can tell that there is some howling getting closer and closer. Oh, God. My question is, how are the wolves are going to get down without dropping and taking two d six damage? They don't that is an interesting question, and that is maybe something that Victor is trying to contain you inside his lair as ah, the gotcha. wolves converge on the well above, and then. Uh, what's this little symbol on oh, me? The uh, little flame thing. Gotcha. I, I usually use a heat metal, metal in other games, so I'm like, uh, did heat metal me? I hope not. Uh, <laughs> you never know with my campaign. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, you know, Rigel being on the astral plane might also break the slow. Maybe. Oh wait, Tolv, you're grappled. Yeah, Tolv's grappled. Grappled. So... I think it does break the slow. Um, yeah, so I'm going to actually offer you guys the choice. Now, if on the uh, ethereal plane, um, he can drop the slow. However, he will still be charmed. Your choice. Uh, huh? what? So if it's, I'm going to leave it up to you. If you want to break the slow on the kid, that's fine. And then um, Rigel will um, 
will still be charmed, right? Or we can keep Rigel ch charmed and then have the slow remain on the child. Okay, like, I think, I, I think yeah. you uh, are mis or you're missaying it. So uh, what you said was we can keep, in both situations, you said Rigel will still be charmed. So I'm assuming in the first situation, oh, slow drops and he's not charmed. Yes, or... that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what we want. Right. Sorry, yeah. assume, uh, you spoke and we're all, all like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's like, having wow. said that, which one would you prefer? I think just dropping both. Uh, that makes... Yeah, yeah that dropping makes both. makes sense, sense to me. To me. Yeah, no, no charm, no slow. Very, very well. The choice is yours. The slow has been broken as Rigel is um, on the other plane. However, at the same time, his charm has been removed. Well, that was lucky. It was. Like and as we finish one. that little um, rule thing, uh, yeah. Adrian, I believe you are up next as Rigel's turn is over. And let me just see when he comes back. Stand by. And the next uh, turn. He comes back so he at the back end of his now. turn. Yeah. He is back Ooh. now. However, he is not charmed. Hey, Leo, as real the quick. The good breaks. The good breaks are, are coming your guys' way. Leo, real quick, can you organize the turn order? Or is that something that we could do? Or uh, I think it's in the correct order, is it not? Oh, Thank maybe you. not. Volt, your. Uh... There we go. Thank you. There we go. Uh, that's uh, a little weird, but um, steady aim. Shoot the vampire lady. Oh, yes. Go ahead. 20, there we go. Oh, my God. 25 sure. is a hit. 21 magical piercing damage. You get sneak attack on And that. just like that, she takes a horrible uh, bolt. That I is with sneak attack. sneak attack. <laughs> oh, that was with sneak attack? Okay. If he 21 damage without doing sneak attack, I'd, I'd be very happy. Yeah. And wow, good rolls because of 21, she takes it right through the mouth as she's hissing at Volt, and the Volt pierces him, and he is dead. She is dead, sorry. Ugh. Oh, nice. Okay, and... Again. Yeah. Uh, hard to say, hard to say, but she appears down. It looks like there isn't really anything in here tall enough to... Well, often, or are these steps here? There are steps, and they lead to be. Uh, they le appear to be leading down to an area uh, that contains a chest. It's a very small area, but there is some coverage down there for sure. Uh, I see the ice things. I like they're like the big. They're at least like hip height, if not higher. Fair enough. Uh, I can't move because I use steady aim. So that's the end of my turn. Oh, interesting. No hiding for you, sir. And if that's yeah. the end of your turn after that vicious shot. Oh, and it came from the side. So actually it pierced the side of her head and went through her mouth the other way. And she is down. It appears, Ketfia, you have arrived just in time to decide what you want to do with your turn. All right. So first things first, I'm, I'm concentrating on the web, correct? Correct. Yes. I'm working yes. on that. Um, which only has the kid right now, who's not slowed anymore. Right. That reminds me, I never rolled wild magic for the slow. I, I'm not used to it. Oh, yeah. Do you want to do that right now? <laughs> or, that's a rewind. I mean, I guess that's yeah, a roll a d20. It's only a natural one that it occurs. So, what are the yeah. odds? For nah. What are the odds as he just got teleported to the astral sea? <laughs> <laughs> the only possible okay, way so... to the charm, by the way. Probably. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do since my weapons don't do check to him pretty much. Uh unfortunately this will leave Rigel open. I mean yeah, so... break the staff in half and jam him with a wedding stick. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I could technically smack him with the. <laughs> I could technically smack him with the staff, but we all know how that goes. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't even take poison damage, so just be one d six blunt. Uh, but we are going to misty step. 
Ooh, and where are you going to Misty Step 2? Above you is only 15 feet. Yeah, I was thinking about Misty Stepping, but I wanted you to do it, so... So, we're going to go over here. Oh, he's going in the room! Come on. <coughs> I'm just going to away so that I can uh, cast... Oh, that's a... That's a... Leveled spell. I was going to cast uh, my... Scorching ray from my magic item. Oh well. Ooh, but you do uh, have we'll cast, if you wish. We'll cast a firebolt. That's at All least right. something. The big guy. Clear shot. Um, 21 is a hit. Seven fire damage. And then we'll move a little bit farther up. Actually, no, I need to stay somewhat at least in the front line. Self here. Besides Rigel, but I mean, we don't want him taking damage. Um, and then little friend is going to play a little tune. Do, 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 do. Four. Ten temporary hit points. So Which just, just me, it looks like. Just you. Just you. If you, if you can't hey. move him closer, though. That's ten feet. That was ten okay. feet. He's good. And if that's the end of your turn, I believe it's the child that uh, first. He is no longer slowed, but he is thirsty for blood. He is Hold going on. to. Tr- Hold he's, on. he's restrained, and uh, Spirit Guardians have this movement again. Ooh. Yeah, he took some damage. There's what, 13, right? Uh, 20 points. Oh, Jesus. 20 radiant damage. The child actually screams this time. Ah! Victor looks at you all, his wife having just been put down, maybe not dead, but definitely down. And he looks to his child getting radiant damage, burning his skin. You will all pay for this. You will all die and become my slaves. And the child is going to try to use his big strength. Oh, I believe... What's the spell DC? Spell DC 16. Uh, The magic item might have its own, though. Let me double check. I think magic item's DC 15. I believe he has broken out. DC 15. So uh, if he's got a plus, then yes. He He definitely has a plus. And he is out of the webbing. Um, You know what? He's um, not not looking this radiant damage at all. Why Um, not? Just get a little bit of a tan, dude. I think you need it. Whoops. Oh, well. <laughs> Down here and try to get some cover. Oh, do behind. I get an opportunity to attack? Yes, you would. I think you No, you know it. what? He's actually just going to move this way because um, <laughs> I, uh, I wasn't quite looking at the opportunity attack there. But he's smart enough at this age. He's been around a couple hundred years probably. He's going to mm-hmm. try to move away. This, um, the well? You know what? Nowhere he can go except inside the tunnel. But then there's yep. sun in the tunnel. He doesn't like that. He's got no choice. He's got to stay behind his dad and just hope that uh, Victor can take care of uh, business. And in fact, not only that, he's going in for an attack. Volt, he's going. because so, so he did this kind of motion like, oh, shit, what am I going to do? I can't go out there. There's sun. I got to try to help him. So he's going to try to hit you, Volt. Oh, and maybe it pays off. Let's see what the modifier is. Your AC is 21, right? Yeah. He is going to try to hit you with all of his might. A plus six. It misses. Your ring of protection comes through once again. But he's going to try again. The damn ring of protection saved you. Yeah, this is like the fifth time now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you have shield at all... Yeah, that's what I'm going. I'm going to use shield. If he this is going to be an 18 plus 6 AC 24. And I am going to use shield. Magic force barrier whoop, comes up just before he was going to try to hit with uh, his fist again. And that is going to be the end of his turn. Mm, the battle appears to be going in your way, Rayon. What do you do? Yeah, I'm surprised, to be honest. All right. I'm so surprised, to I die, am be honest. Move... So Ron's going to move around this way. Nothing Come new up. do here. One second.
Oh, okay, okay. That's concerning. Right. I don't like the sound of that. Now, hold on. <laughs> I feel like he just remembered that vampires have legendary actions. No, they have legendary actions, yes. so why wouldn't they? I mean, a kraken doesn't have any legendary resistances, and if, of all creatures, I think the kraken should. Well, that's because the kraken is just weird. <laughs> Although the kraken, if I remember right, has legendary actions, that's but no legendary resistances. <laughs> right. All offense, no defense. His turn is up next. Okay. All right. Yeah, I have this now. Okay. What do you do, Rayo? All right. So I'm coming up in between Big Daddy and the kid here. And then I'm going to bonus action. Uh, Wolf, Wolfie is going to teleport down. Ah, uh, I was wondering if you were going to do it. It's going to teleport to there. <clears throat> and since he can bite on the same turn he teleports, he's going to go for a uh, bite attack on, I guess, well, no, he's going to go after the kid. Uh, magical attack? I think, I think if I remember correctly. It's not a magical attack, unfortunately. Uh, that werewolves are. Hmm. Yeah, your passive um, Arcana um, Ketvia would be a little bit less damage. It's not a werewolf. Go ahead. Ew. That's only a uh, 12 to hit. The miss, Wolfie misses. All right, and Ryan. <clears throat> and you still have your action. Ryan is going to. See, that doesn't make sense though. I'm going to take a page out of Leo's book. I think it's not good. <laughs> they don't have any familiars. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, no, he's taking the other leaf out of Leo's book. Maybe the one where you replace an attack with a different type of option? <laughs> or, exactly. where, he grapples, where he grapples him and tries to put him on the ground. Yeah, or grapple do, or shove. Yeah, because I do have advantage. I have advantage. And a, like a plus six? Plus seven? I have advantage plus... They're pretty tough. Yeah. You can try it, though. As I have advantage plus flexes seven. his muscles underneath the escape. I would say try to put damage on him if you can. Yeah, I'll go for damage. You're right. All right. You know what a really big target is if he grabbed the child and ran. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Actually, since Wolfie's there, let's see. Hum, 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 hum. Where? Up the well? And then burn the child? Oh, that would be cool. Do it. <laughs> Drag the child into the sun. <laughs> Unfortunately, Loth a Good Paladin doesn't really work that way. <laughs> Uh, uh, but they're vampires. It was two reason, like, it, 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 yes. If was doing the, uh, yes. That was a great <laughs> idea, though. I, I could picture it, though. Oh, I could picture it in my mind. Also, awesome. I'm not sure five intelligence works that way. True. Yeah, I wouldn't be smart enough yeah. to do that. Okay, yeah. Right on. Victor's right here. Yeah, just going to slice you in the face, I guess. E to say for your turn to end. Go, go ahead. Damn. What do you do? 14 is a miss as Victor dodges it. Ooh, he was not able to sort of use his teleportation dodge this time. 20 hits. You say teleportation dodge, and yeah. I'm just going full Castlevania image. Oh, yeah, on it. for sure. And, and that's just flavor. Like, he's just dodging it. <laughs> yeah. Shit, let's go. 20, for though, does connect with Guardian of the Master. What do you do for damage? I'm pumping it's it. Like, it's I'm like, pumping like, it up. Like... Hell yeah. Oh. Oh. Slashing. Not not bad, but the Radiant, what do you choose with your smite? Second level slot remaining. 22! Roll two eights. I'm not going to lie, Rayon. I think I've, I've seen you roll ones and twos more often with your sword than any other roll <laughs> on the D goddamn eight. Yeah, I know. I hate the one D eights. 
Me personally, I, I, I mean, don't. At least me personally, I hate weapon, one though. eights. I like when he sixes and tens. He, I don't like eights. <laughs> he rolls ones, twos, and eights. Uh, at least and, he gets to the blood, though. I can't really talk. <laughs> all or nothing, man. All or nothing. So I am curious, Rayon. Is that the end of your turn? That, that was my bonus in my action, so yeah. Very well! Thank you, Sean, for reminding me. The vampire can take three I legendary actions. I don't know actions. how you forgot. <laughs> yeah, I should have known. Choosing one from the following one legendary option can only be used at a time and oh, only at the oh end my. of another creature's turn. The vampire regains spent legendary actions at the start of his next turn, which happens to be coming right up. He can move up to his speed. He's not going to do that. He can make an unarmed strike, or he can bite. Straight up bite. Two action points he is going to uh, consume on you, Rayon, as he reaches out and tries to grab and bite. Damn, man, I have no more spell slots. Oh! <laughs> Uh-oh. Roll it. it. Hit your kid. Oh, you uh, bite your own kid. Bite your own kid. Oh my god, that would be hilarious. Oh, yes! Yes! His own Come kid. on! Okay, so that's getting flipped. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes the bite damage. Ooh, it is 1d6 plus 4. However, part of it's necrotic. Let's see what the damage is for the piercing. Oh, so that is nasty. 10 points of damage there. Daddy, then we also have... <laughs> Eight and then have okay. So he takes a little bit more. It could have been way worse, but he has struck his own child. In the heat of battle, he slips, and um, that I was not expecting that at all. Imagine going for the neck of like a six foot tall lion man, and you hit the neck of like your four foot child. Seven, seven foot tall. <laughs> So that was just his legendary action, and uh, I am going to use one a little friend at the end of his turn. I just totally forgot about it. So, uh, little friend, you are going to get just a normal melee strike attack. Fair enough. Oh, and I believe he hits with his... Yeah, it's like an 18, 19. Adjustments. 18, yeah, it's for sure. And like plus he, eight. He is going to use his. I don't know. Don't say. I actually don't know. He is going to plus ten. It's at least a plus six. That's all I know. Oh, this it's, is interesting. Actually, it's going to do one uh, d eight plus four bludgeoning. So uh, here's the damage, and uh, so that is going to be uh, six points, and you are grappled. Ah, wait. A claw attack is bludgeoning damage. That's weird. Uh, I might be looking at that wrong. No, it's an unarmed strike. He's using a fist. It is bludgeoning, actually. Huh. So, uh, little friend is grappled, and uh, he can use uh, his action to try to escape. It'll be DC 18, though. It, um, doesn't little friend have the temporary hit points as well? No, mm, little no. friend does okay. not benefit from that. Okay, Thankfully, okay. he doesn't qualify. No, Otherwise, power that would hell. be just outright broken. Uh, little friend is grappled and that was the end of his legendary actions his turn is up though and he has all of his actions at his disposal are you ready rayon he looks deeply into your eyes with his spinning and he looks at your strength not being a half elf he thinks maybe just maybe I can get him on my side I roll a wisdom savings throw, DC 7. Ooh. Rayon, you hear his words as he spoke to him as a trusted friend. You look to your party members as he whispers this to you. They are not what you think they are. You are on my side. They are fooling you, big cat, he says. You must attack them. They are monsters under their skin. Worse than me, I assure you. And that is going to be the end of his turn. Um, he is going to... Um, I think he's just going to move one spot over here. And uh, that is going to be the end of his turn. Opportunity attack for Wolfie. 
Oh. My mistake. And that is going to be the end of his turn. Rayon, oh, well, well, you appear you to too. be charmed. <laughs> okay. Rigel, so, you so. are uh, you you just went to another plane and back and it broke your charm. What do you do? <laughs> Uh, that's a lot to process. Tell me you can spell magic. Uh, I happen to know off the top of my head that dispel magic would not work. Yeah, it technically doesn't. In in Thor Storm's King Thunder, I actually tried doing that on a similar situation and Inti let it, so I might do it as well. Uh, also, Rigel doesn't no dispel magic? Yeah, yeah, so don't worry about it. But I'm just saying, like, if that was the case, I might have allowed it. I'm sorry, do you Rachel do, doesn't know dispel magic? No. I am yeah, very no, surprised I, by that. I, I'm kind of surprised, surprised by it, too. Yeah, it's uh, a creature feature as opposed to a spell. Well, I... Uh, Your slow wasn't super last time, but come on, you're a sixth level divination wizard. You must have all sorts of mind-altering, reality-altering magics at your disposal, Rigel. What do you do? I do. Okay. Oh, that's the wrong spell. I meant... Uh... I think you meant Tasha's Mind Whip. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes, I knew it! Does Tasha's Mind Whip keep them from using legendary actions? Oh, that's a good point. Can you click on the spell description just to see what it says exactly? I don't think so. I think it's you can't take reactions, and on your turn, you can do, like, uh, Thank you. move, take a bonus action or action. Yeah, it just says reaction, so... Um, moreover, Dang you it. can... Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to say that it doesn't really specify one way or another, but um, I'm going to say that uh, he only has one legendary action at his disposable until his next turn. His choice. Fair? Oh, yeah, fair. that's fair. He is going to roll an int intelligence savings throw. Let's see what happens. Personally, I think that's a little OP for level 2 spell, but that's up to you. That's a DM call. <laughs> yeah, oh. sure. I, I, I'm, I'm running this in the moment. I don't know. I'm just saying shit. He fails! <laughs> his intelligence saving throw he is however going to burn his very last legendary resistance to save i figured he would hey it's a good use because you've burned three in like two rounds good job anything else on your turn rigel uh he does take the five psychic damage um but oh i'm sorry uh five psychic sure okay yeah just um Tolv, do you want to get into the front line? Uh, no, I got something else planned. He's, he's a little hurt as well. Pretty okay. hurt. Uh, in that case... Oh, I would, yeah. I would, pull, I, I, I would pull little friend out of there. <laughs> well, he's kind of grappled. And he would have had a yeah, right. top attack if I tried to get out of there. Oh. So it would have probably been grappled anyway. So. Uh, hey, knowing Rigel, though, he would definitely be like heading up, you know, heading somewhere a little safer, like up here. Oh, uh, like, yeah. Rigel's going to try to cross over this coffin. And then once he's crossed over, he's going to pull little friend out of the grapple. Which, oh, did you go? About. Okay, okay. Oh, very nice move. Yes, the telep telepathic shove breaks the grapple. That that is something Rigel would do. Good job. Yeah, and I completely forgot he had that ability. To be honest, <laughs> how did you, it's like his best ability? Oh yeah, you're right. It, it's been two be, weeks. Give me a break. Inti <laughs> would yeah, be proud. Great. And if that's the end of your turn, Volt, you are up next. Inti, the battle started. So poorly for you guys, but has since turned a little bit in your favor. Perhaps Zeus is looking down upon you. What do you do? I'm going to move here. I'm just going to move this guy out the way for a second, okay? Yeah. I'm going to move here. Did we take a short rest? Yes. No. Did we? Yep, we did. I think we did. We took, we took one a short, short rest, short and then rest down on the, well. the surface before we came down here. 
because I have almost I guess no that would <laughs> why we're all at choice. full health points or almost full. Fair enough. So I'm moving right over here, which is 40. Give me advantage on the vampire. The moving them back over there. Okay, and so Ray flies in, distracting and fainting against Victor to to uh, allow an opening. And what do you do next? Um, the only thing I think I can do a second level chromatic orb. Are you doing that from <clears throat> melee range? But we'll be at disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, I guess, yeah, I, I see straight. what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you could do shocking your ass or something like that. Well, if I move here, well, do I know that he's um, charmed? I don't know if he's charmed or not, right? No, you would not, because he is facing away from you, and as it looks like, he's just looking at Victor right now. Would Rigel have known? Oh, he for sure would have. He would have seen what went down from his angle off to the left. That doesn't matter. I'm going to move over here, and we'll see what happens. I'm still now. Uh, my shield does that st- end at the end of my turn or the beginning? Start. Start. The start. Okay. All right. So I'll give uh, I'll give uh, an opportunity to attack then. Oh, you're stepping away from the child. Uh oh, actually, that'd be two attacks, wouldn't it? From right from uh, one from the vampire and one from Rayon. Yes. Yeah, you don't. Want oh to yes, to yes. Rayon. Rayon would sense that you're moving away. Fuck! 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 fuck. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you the bad. A... <laughs> I mean, one, sh- one shield would probably block them both. Uh, yeah, right. Hey, you know what? You would, you would... Ryan's only hit through the shield on a eighteen or higher. Uh, no, it would be a what's what is it with the shield? Twenty five. Twenty six. It's 26 with a shield on? Yeah. yeah. Is it? So it's a 7. It's a, Yeah, no, it is 18. My bad. All right. Screw it. I'm just going. Uh, I'm going over there. I the two opportunity attacks. See if anything hits. Two opportunity attacks you will get. Um, first, let me do the kid, and then... Um, Saber, if you can do your character after. The oh, child two lashes out. None. <laughs> <laughs> you can take over the wizard if you really want. Uh, Twelve. Pl- it's a miss. The child misses. <laughs> um, go, go ahead, Rayon. Uh, yeah, Twenty-four is a hit for now, isn't it? Yeah. Shoot. Ooh. And how many spell slots of uh, first? I got one. Do you have left? I got one first level, and I actually got two second levels. Oh, really? Damn. Okay. Yeah. Well, what about the spiritual I, hammer, though? Didn't she cast that? Yeah. I have three. I have three spells. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, twenty-four. Um, roll for damage. No, he's shielded. Oh, I'm sorry. No, the shield went up, right? Shield yeah. went up, and he's good. And now I'm um, doing another second level, um, chromatic orb. Oh, and the owl helped you. Go ahead with advantage. Oh, do you need a crit? If I need. If any time for crit now, it is. Come on, baby. Ah. 15 plus uh, 8. Hey, 15 plus 8 is still a hit. Yeah. Roll oh, for damage. Seven. And what I'm type sorry, of seven. damage, I'm curious, are you going to use? I am going to use thunder damage. Interesting. And, and? I am, and I am going to use my chat of Renity. And put the 4d8, so that's 32 points of damage on top of Oh, and he has uh, no save. That is straight up 34 thunder 32, damage. 32. It, 32 thunder damage as it washes over his body. And it appears as though it caused significant damage. Didn't look like he was able to... Not any of it at all. I think you're and taking the damage on the wrong person. 
Because Rayon just took that hit. <laughs> or took a bunch of damage. Yeah, you just gave me 32 <laughs> yeah. damage, bro. Oh, but sorry about that. Someone's a vampire. Why would the vampire get damage? All right, Rayon, you can fix your hit points. I pressed yours by accident, I guess. Oh, I had... So did you fire at the um... vampire, or did you fire at... Yeah, of course I did the vampire. Why yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. He fired at the vampire, not at you, Rayon. Oh, I thought it was me. My bad. Oh. <laughs> Put your smoke over there, boys. I was like, what? Are we all good? Yes, I took off the damage off Victor, not, not Rayon. Okay. All right, and I'm going to move my spiritual hammer over here and try to give him a whack. And that is a flank? Actually, no, maybe not. I don't think spiritual weapon qualifies. No, it does not. Not a creature that technically so. doesn't take up space, so I don't think right. so. But Victor is looking a little worse for wear after that it, max damage. Now, does he need to make a constitution saving throw for the charm? He does not, no. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's, it's a, there's it's there's not up. many ways to break it. <laughs> That's a miss. It's a miss. And I do have to ask, anything else on your turn? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I might back up. Well, no, I'm not going to back up. I'm going to stay right here. That's it. If that's the end of your turn, he is going to use his one legendary action. And Hold he on, looks... his turn. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um... That's, uh, what's that? Uh, that does not apply on legendary actions, I don't think. Yeah, no, he's not doing his turn. I'm just saying he's doing a legendary action. So I don't think there's any spiritual uh, guardians right. damage. 13. Oh, is it his turn yet? No, 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 no. He's doing a legendary action. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But remember, because of the Tasha's Mind Whip, he only has one, and he is going to use it now. Wolfie is not charmed. He looks down, Wolfie. And I'm sorry, but he's going to go in. For oh. Let's see. <laughs> What's Wolfie's AC? Well, 13. Yeah. He misses with the bite! Oh, he wow, went to the bite. That could have been smart. bad for Wolfie. Funny Go enough, ahead, Wolfie would have actually Wolfie would have actually succeeded on the charm, too. Yeah. And there's some freaking damage on this guy. Yeah, yeah uh charm is a legendary action, so. Yeah, I'm just gonna shoot the vampire with triple advantage. So that's a 27 for 21 damage. Ooh, the bolt pierces Victor's shoulder, and he actually, uh, he actually wait, uh, he's sorry, he actually uh, staggers for a moment, and uh, it appears to be pretty bad damage. The, the bolt goes right through the shoulder. Yeah, the only thing I, I was considering was casting Charm Person on Ryan, but eh. We'll have to figure this out when it happens. Yeah, uh, that's the end of my turn. If that's the end of your turn, we only have one more turn before we have Child, followed up by Rayon, followed up by Victor. A three in a row. Go ahead, uh, Ketvia. What do you do? Yeah, sorry, Rayon, but we're going to try to stop that uh, with Web. Another Web? <laughs> Perfect. And it's not affecting anybody right now. Move the yellow square where you want as you cast web from your staff of <sighs> I cannot move the uh, square, but I'm going to do it from or I'll, I'll just put a new one down. Yeah, that was my square, so I had to delete it for you. Oops. Will Wolfie be uh, in, encased in this webbing? We'll see. Yeah, he will be. No. He's going to go like a little, little bit away, but. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's the idea. Just in case anything comes down. <laughs> that's a good point. You see wolves fall to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you see a wolf just like fall down, get stabbed straight way. through with, this, with the pike. <laughs> that's right. There is a pike down there. All right. Very good, Ketvia. Uh, a web of sticky, 
magic substance has appeared. Anything else on your turn? Uh, no, that is it. And if that's the end of your turn, oh my goodness. All three need to do a save, but we'll start with the child on his turn. He is going to take some radiant damage. Oh, get ready to roll some dice. Rayon will be spared, though, of course. Here we go. 15 points. 15 points on the child. He is in the red. This is not looking good, Father, as he looks up to Victor with a pained Thanks. face. Well, Leo, have you Light been rolling? Child, God. Have you been rolling for a save? Uh, you know what? I think I don't think I have. Good point. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Well, Here's save for half. Ah, uh, he fails. <laughs> I'll roll one for Victor, actually, right? Because Victor got tagged before, didn't he? Uh, yeah, but I don't recall what we tagged him with. But yeah, he did. Let's see if I get to save a little bit. Okay, so we'll say he gets back uh, another eight points, we'll say, just for fun. That's, that's fair. Yeah, I think that tracks. Anyways, the child, um, he has failed on his webbing. Did I do that save yet or not? No, 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 no he did not. not. Here comes the webbing! The dex is a fail. He has been webbed again. He looks up. Father, Poor you're kid losing his battle. What do you want me to do? And Victor says, it does not look good, I agree. What I want you to do is kill that wolf, and then we can make our escape. Very well, Father. They're going after Wolfie. This is this is not good. What's uh, funny is he'll have disadvantage because Wolfie isn't restrained yet. He will have disadvantage. Uh, Wolfie is not restrained. Yeah, I think you're right on that. Um, mm -hmm. You know what? Victor's actually going to say, do me a favor, hold down that wolf. <laughs> and he's going to try to grapple <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, oh, he's got some strength. It's going to uh, contested strength or acrobatics. No. Uh, yeah, I think he's got like a 20 or something like that. Well, it would have been a... Wolfie uh, is it would be, grappled. It would be a six, actually. So, yeah. And um, you know what? He's got multi-attack, and I kind of rule it where he can make another attack, so he's just going to try to punch this wolf at disadvantage. Uh, misses. And that that's the almost end of his turn as um, he used his turn to attack so he can't escape. So that's going to be the end of his turn. Yeah. Oh, Rayon, you are up next. Now you are spared from the radiant damage because you need to select the enemies at the start yep, of yep, the yep. casting of Spirit Guardians. So uh, go ahead and Victor is going to command you to attack the enemies that are actually monsters pretending, posing as and uh, I'm going to need you to do a deck savings throw first. Yeah, which is at advantage, actually. 17. Oh, the four would have been a fail, but you get advantage from uh, what? Your um, child my, of my, divinity uh, my, or something? My, yeah, my child divinity is still up. Your child right, divinity cool. does not apply to saving throws. Yeah, it's oh, on it doesn't? Yeah, it's on Acros checks. Oh, in that case, if that's what you were banking on, you are restrained. No, I am restrained, so never mind. Which is bad, actually, for me. That was the point. How sad for you. <laughs> so, I need you to make a strength check, which I'm sure you're going to bust out using okay, your action. Now, now I have advantage, right? Because that's an athletics check. I have advantage. 21. You easily bust out. And you are going to move in uh, this direction. Victor commands you to um, take an attack action on your next turn. But um, I believe that's going to be the end of your turn. Uh, Wolfie does not... Does Victor's not, turn uh, comes out, up time next. Time out. Time out. Uh, Wolfie... Does Wolfie move independently now? Because I can't control him. Oh, shoot. I forgot about Wolfie. Yeah, he needs to do... Uh, yeah, he's moving independently. He needs to make a deck saving throw. Okay. Uh... 
Hey! Wolfie didn't get webbed. He has seated. He has dodged the webbing. What do you do with Wolfie's turn? Uh, he, well, he's grappled. Terrain, mind you. Uh, so he's going to have to break the grapple, too, actually. Or, well... Does he have a teleport left? I don't know how many teleports I have. I think Two, it's like, I believe. You, and you haven't used any. I used one. Except the one to get down here. Okay, yeah, he'll just have to teleport out of there. Very nice. And I believe, is that a bonus action to teleport, or is it his action? It's an action, it because he can make a butt attack with it if he lands in an open space next to a turn. Um, so technically, if he Wolfie, teleports... Wolfie, kill the child! To, yeah, if he moves to the opposite side of the child... Oh, hello. Hello, Wolfie, and from his face there. If he teleports so to here... Then, yeah. You can make a bite attack. Oh, that's perfect, see. actually. Yeah, go ahead. You can teleport there and make a bite attack. Yeah, I put up the wrong uh, handout. Yeah. It does say that you can t uh, bite before or after teleporting, so you could bite and then ditch, dump, or run. Oh, very nice. Uh, well, if he breaks the grapple, you actually have an advantage on this attack, because the because the child is restrained. Well, actually, it does not give a disadvantage out there. Uh, you would have advantage either way. Because you are not restrained, you are merely grappled. Yeah, grapple doesn't give any disadvantage on the attack. It's only restrained, which you avoided with the web. But in you any fact, case, Wolfie want to get Wolfie want to GTFO out of that web and then attack anyway. So, <laughs> in any yeah, case. he for sure would have. <laughs> Go ahead like and things. attack but with advantage so with your bite. The child is in the red. Ooh, Pantone. Victor is not going to like this if you hit fifteen. No. 15 is just a hit. Roll for damage. And I need the magical, child though. to also make a strength saving throw. Sure. Go ahead and do the damage. Oh, Max damage! <laughs> wow. It's non magical. Non -magical. However, he, he <coughs> is still just barely alive. As Victor yells out, No! as the child appears to be closer and closer to death. And yes, I will roll that saving throw. DC 11. And he is not not uh. thrown. <laughs> he is, however, restrained. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. <clears throat> if that's the tried. end of your turn. Wolfie tried. <laughs> I got something. Well, if that's the end of your Victor's turn, turn, Victor's turn is up next. He looks at the room. Radiant energy is striking his entire body. Go ahead oh, and wait, roll. Well, hold on, hold on. It's his turn? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and roll. And now I'll try to can... save. And he... Oh, he actually has advantage. Stand by. Yes, hold on. 8, uh, 9, 10, 11, 16. And he is saved. He saved. Alright, so eight. What is the DC? Sixteen, I think. Yeah. And as his body gets hmm. uh, stricken, uh, yeah, he has a very good save for that. Oh, only fifteen, actually. Uh, now, now he Victor has to make a dexterity saving throw now for the web. Oh shoot! I forgot about that. The <laughs> webbing. Oh no! He does have advantage though. Oh, oh no! He fail? He fail! No. <laughs> Oh, perfect. This poor vampire. <laughs> oh my god. This is insane. He looks upon the room. He is restrained. He still has his action. He, uh, he yells out, looking at his condition, his child condition, he yells out, Wait! You have killed my wife. However, kill me if you wish. Spare the child, is what he says. How do you respond before he does his action? I'm not saying shit this time. <laughs> uh, we are all probably looking at him with murderous intent rather than rather than the child. Except for Ryan, who's standing very there well. He adds. He adds one more thing. He says, "You know, kill me if you wish. Spare the child." He says, "The child is not like us. The child is different." This child 
does not feed on the flesh of humans or humanoids. He will live peacefully, I swear, if you let him live. What Wolfie is your growls response? growls the fact that he's not a humanoid. I'm going to insight check that. Very well. It appears that your insight check was high enough. He does appear genuine based on his tone and body language. He says, we are trying to teach him better ways. A new generation of vampire. What do, how do you respond to what he's saying? Let go of our friend and we can talk further about it. Okay. Or at least that's, the, that's my opinion. What about you guys? Yeah, I'm good with that. Mm. Adrian? Uh, it's not my call to make on these things yet. <laughs> Very well. And, uh, half of us don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let me skip you, actually. Rigel, what do you think Rigel would say to this request? Uh, he would probably be... Now he, he's had some friends with undead. Look at his face. He's a little bit older. <laughs> a little bit wiser. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm going to roll an insight to see how much... Sure. Go ahead. Ooh. He's not sure. He can't get a read on Victor. Hmm. It's binary. Just do an odd or even. I believe Rigel would probably... <laughs> would you let the vamp live? <laughs> I, I believe Rigel would probably be like, ah, the important thing here is killing the big one. Interesting. All right. It sounds like the group is going to accept Victor's offer. Very well, then. I will... Um, allow you to slay me. And he is going to um, opt to not break free. He is going to use his action to take a knee. But he does have one, one little request, one little caveat before he takes the knee. He says, please immediately turn off that radiant energy striking me and my child. It is awful. Volt, do you accept his counter offer before he takes a knee? No. The radiant energy is not getting shut off. Mm. Uh, oh. But Rigel, Rigel pipes up, but step, we clear the child from the radiant. Yes, we can. All right, so I can I, let you use your reaction, Volt, to step just a little bit to the left to keep the child away from uh, the radiant damage. Is that fair? And more permanently, Rigel can come down and push the child. <laughs> yeah, why don't we just have Rigel push the child out? I'm going to well, say I think, I think he wants to know before he ends his turn. Yes, he does want to know. Will you comply? I think it's a big thing. If we don't accept, that... then he's going to try to get out. If we do accept, then he'll not uh, use any actions. He wants you, Volt, to either move yourself away and keep the radiant energy on or outright turn it off before he takes a knee. What do you do? Wise choice, he whispers, and he goes down and takes a knee. Excuse me, wise choice? You're the one that's in. Yeah. <laughs> You're who the knows? one that's in trouble right now. Arrogant vampires who have lived a millennia. You can't, you can't blame them. Did he, um, did he let... Uh... Rayon, go. Rayon, you are released from the charm as promised. Duh. What? What's going on? All right, whose turn is it? The turn order is complete. He says, we surrender. Now, remove this sticky webbing, he says. The web spell. He's aware of it. He knows what it is. Oh no, remove he has it. to die first. We're not gonna remove Oh yeah, him. no, I'm I'm unloading. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. You're not gonna kill him in front of his kid, are you? He might Absolutely. Keep, 
that might be a problem. He says, uh, please let my child uh, leave first, and then you I can. Won't, I him. won't let go of the webbing. However, we. Oh wait, we can't. We can pull him out of it. How about that? Yeah, Rigel comes over, pulls the child out of the webbing. Ah, very good. And the child is actually, uh, we're out of turn here. He, the child is going to um, tell you, well, Victor's going to tell you that there is a cloak, a special cloak inside his coffin, which is just off to the right. It protects him from the sunlight. Please, will you allow him to put it on before he leaves? Now, Victor's bravado and arrogance is clearly gone. He's at your mercy. He's asking you politely. Will you allow this? I don't see a problem with that. Rigel doesn't see a problem with it at the moment. Nope. Very well. The child goes into the coffin, grabs um, a beautiful black cloak. He puts it on. And then he steps towards the webbing. Now, please, drop this web spell. You may kill me. I will not move. You have my word. But allow him to escape. Uh, instead, Rigel's just going to continually push him through the webbing. <laughs> So the problem that I see with that is, uh, considering that the webbing is going into the well, you would have a very hard time getting out. Yes, it mm. would be difficult to use your uh, telepathic shove. He says, please, remove this webbing. You have my word. And you can incite him one more time if you wish. How about Oof. we I mean, set up... Ryan, a... Ryan can grapple him if you want. Yeah, that would advantage or disadvantage on the insight. Uh, sure, advantage, yeah. I mean, uh, you can get help from one of your allies, for example. It appears that he is genuine in his word. He just merely wants this webbing to remove so his child can escape. I asked Kefia to drop the webbing. Right, Rayon, grab him. Sure. I'm, I'm assuming that he's allowing it to happen. Automatic uh, grapple, no check. In that case, I'll drop it. Very well. The child gets to the entrance of the uh, the well. The sunlight coming down on his cloak as he has it over his head it appears to have no effect on him. He looks to his father. He says, thank you, father. I will live on and I will be what you wanted me to be, a different type of vampire, he says. Farewell. Then he disappears, climbing up the well with ease. With before he starts climbing up, or before he gets like too high up, I would just double want to double check that the wolves won't eat him alive when he gets out. <laughs> oh, the wolves! Yes, no, the wolves are actually going to. Um, uh, the wolves are controlled by the vampire. Yeah. I assumed, but I just want to double check just in case. Yeah, no, the wolves are going to uh, probably uh, lose their uh, charm very soon. But Victor, on his knees, thank you. Now, just, just do with me real what real you real will. Real. Ryan? Hmm? Ryan, you, like uh, uh, well, you should drag him into the sun. Should we all go at the same time? As the sun is the only way to be sure. Well, that, that would be a pretty, I wouldn't say barbaric move, but it wouldn't be uh, a clean death, I would say. I mean, Ryan, Ryan's yeah. not cool with killing defenseless people. Unfortunately, so Ryan would not. All right. Do that. Uh, well, uh, I'm he's not a person to go through it. So. Volk appears to have no qualms as he steps up with his mace. Oh God, I missed. I How think I missed miss? a guy on a Saint Dale, bro. Uh, uh, there's no more screen. I'm going there too. Shoot him. <coughs> That's just one bolt, Adrian. Your bolt strikes Victor as the cleric misses with his mace. The bolt uh, actually pierces the side of his body, enters his heart. Boom, 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 boom. His heart stops dead Ugh. as the radiant damage lashes at his body, and he is dead, dead now. No mist. Good battle. Uh, the mist, um, it does appear, however, uh, the only place he can go is to his coffin, which is up here, so he's just going to opt to take the radiant damage and outright die. Ah. 
Oh, wow. Now, did she turn into mist? Uh, she did not. She actually just outright died from the radiant damage at the start of her turn. Uh, I think it's only vampire lords that can turn into mist on death. But anyways, good and, you know, battle, guys. Good things. battle. Wow, we got lucky. Like I'm just saying, we got lucky. We got first really round. lucky. Imagine, imagine if Rigel was stayed charmed, came back, and dropped a slow on us. That would suck. That would really suck. I'm not going to lie there. And the only thing that stopped that from happening was because he got sent to the astral plane. <laughs> he sent himself to the astral plane, even. I mean, it's crazy. What's the chance of that happening? Like 2%? 2%. Not even. 2% chance. Because he had to roll a nat 1, didn't he? Yep. No, no. Uh, Tides no. of Chaos uh, uh, yeah, gotcha. is an automatic, but it's a 2% chance because it's a 31 or 32 on a D100. I guess if he turned into a potted plant or something <laughs> similar, then it would have been fair, <laughs> or then it would have been a similar effect. Or a sheep, or he could have summoned a unicorn. <laughs> Summon a unicorn. The unicorn <laughs> breaks the charm because because they. Can. The unicorn is like, uh, no, I, I'm not. I'm not into this. And then he bamps out of existence. Um. Okay. Good battle. The room is quiet. You are free to move about. Now the question do is, do we hunt down the child? I I don't. He's already got a head start. We have no idea. Actually, we probably could find distracts if we really wanted to, but I'm not. I'm not gonna hunt down a child personally. That that just seems. It did seem genuine that they were trying to show this child a new way of being a vampire. So, um, you by never the know. way, the child's name is Strahd. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is the origin story. Origin story, um, Strahd, right here. <laughs> also, uh, okay, well, I'm changing my campaign idea then. <laughs> <laughs> also volt um i noticed you're heading off to the uh, stairs there but um as you're walking by ketvia uh ketvia actually stops you uh for a moment and grabs your arm and um he looks at your neck and um remember that bite where uh, she critted you on a nat 20 there? yes no who could forget oh that's right it appears as though there are black <coughs> vein marks protruding from the area where the two bite marks are. So there's this black sort of um, substance, it appears, um, or something inside that, uh, that area. And uh, Ketfia, you just, um, that's what you see. What do you do? Uh, well, that's very bad. Um... And if you recall, you made a con save, um, Paul, and you failed at the end of the last session. Yes. That's not I good. don't have anything to do with curses yet, guys. I'm not the high level. Uh, well, I can there do it tomorrow. Did, it did a that offered us a you know, get rid of a curse of the town, right? I can remove a curse. We tomorrow. used that offer, though. We already used that offer on freaking who was it? Strings? No, not it was strings. Rigel. Rigel. I believe she has removed curse twice for your party. <laughs> She prepared it twice. She didn't actually cast it. Oh, the maybe once then. Yeah, you're right. Oh, that's because Strings made a deal. <laughs> it's because cause Strings was an idiot. So, I know you're level 5 told. Do you have the... Uh, I'm assuming that remove curse is a... I believe it's a third level spell, right? Yeah, I, I could do it tomorrow. I yeah. can't do it today. Yeah, but you so, have time um, to do it by tomorrow. Rigel's uh, well, not here, and uh, Rigel actually steps up. He notices what Kefi is saying. Rigel says, hmm, let me take a look. Let me see if I can deem any knowledge from my studies. He probably has the most knowledge on curses out of the group now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and Rigel, if you're getting help from someone who also has proficiency in Arcana or History, Rigel, it's your choice. Okay. You can make an Arcana or History check. I got proficiency in Arcana, so I will give you assistance. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Rigel can describe sort of what he sees, and then Volt, you can help yeah, him out like with I, your knowledge. Rigel like holds up a mirror so that Tolv can see what's going on. Yeah, well, there and, is a mirror uh, with a desk over there. It's invisible. He yeah. sees nothing in the mirror. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> 
Uh, that's a 22. 22, Arcana. So you think back into your studies, Rigel, and you think, yes, I have seen this before. This, this is not good, he says. Well, no shit. <laughs> and uh, Sean, when you're ready, I need you to read this in the chat bar after Rigel goes back and uh, verifies what he thought it might be. Okay. Poisoned between the worlds of the living and the dead, Dampiers retain their grip on life, yet are endlessly tested by vicious hungers. Their ties to the undead grant Dampiers a taste of a vampire's deathless prowess in form of increased speed, dark vision, and a life-draining bite. You just turn Tolv into a Dampier? Not quite. Volt. It appears that between the two of you, you are quite certain that this is the early onset of Dampierism. Now, you're not Remember sure. From Zanfier, right? Dampier, yeah. Um, yeah. You're not sure how long the onset to be full complete. However, that a remove curse would prevent the onset of Dampierism to be complete. However, you're trying to think back between the two of you how long it typically takes because you don't have it prepared, right? You're, uh, no, no, of course, course not. No, of course no, not. Of course not. So a minimum of eight hours is what it's going to take for you to prepare that, correct? Yes. Now you think back to how long it takes for Dampierism to be complete. It could be Anywhere from days to mere hours is what you can think. Based on that very good arcana check. Having said have, that, what do you do? I don't have any choice. There's, there's no choice here. There's, there's absolutely no choice. I have no, we have to write it out. And if I become a vampire, kill me. End the story. Uh, what? What? Seriously, you're telling your companions to kill you. Yeah. I'm not going to live like this. Adrian is going to be <sighs> remain completely silent and see if he can mage hand open this chest of, that was over here. Of course. Of course. Here's what the thief is yep. doing. There you okay? go, Rogue. There you go. <sighs> the cleric is telling you that he might turn into a vampire spawn. He wants you to kill them. And what is the rogue thinking? Uh, the well, so about that what the rogue is in the corner. The rogue is remaining very silent while he's doing this, but he is you like you see him giving worried glances and a very concerned look. <laughs> but sure. it, but he, okay. he's all, like you can tell, you can almost tell he's biting his tongue. He wants to say something, but he's just not. For sure. He's thinking, I want to see what's in that chest. So uh Adrian, uh what did you do with the chest? Sorry? I just open it with Mage Hand. Okay, it is locked. It appears to I be locked. I unlock it with Mage Hand. Oh, you're going to try to use your uh, Thieves tools? Yep. Very well. So as the rest of you are having a really deep, heavy conversation, you, you can hear click, 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 as the rogue is doing roguish things. Uh, while they're down here having their discussion and whatnot, Kevia is going to go up the well and just keep an eye out just to make sure that nothing is coming for us and we don't get caught up first. Very well. So, um, yeah, you take a look and it appears to be all quiet. The wolves that were once under Victor's control are gone and no sign of the child. I see this book in the corner. Maybe there's something in the book. Who knows? There might be a spell scroll around here. Let's look around. Hmm. Wait, what spell scrolls do we currently have on us? If we happen to have a remove curse spell scroll, <laughs> that would that would save a lot of. Uh, now, here's an interesting question, DM. Mm -hmm. If we kill Tove and we revivify him, does that cure him? Yeah, that's a good question. I was not expecting that. Um, there is definitely a possibility. I would say. Yeah, I mean, maybe. 
It's one of those uncharted territories that you have not heard any uh, experience of in your studies. <laughs> but it's possible. Because I, I, mean, I do have a scroll of Revivify. Because it, it is... It is a curse that binds you to a place between life and death. Yeah, so um, which could Volt, go either so way. You know, I mean, you're not you're not undead per se as a dampier. You're just you're not you're not going to be yourself. That's for sure. Mm, I don't think it's going to change anything. And uh, you take yeah. a look through the scrolls and books on the floor, and um, unfortunately, there is. Um, Nothing of value. It appears to be notes. Old notes. Um, Adrian, actually, you open the chest after successfully picking the lock while the rest of the party is having a, a deep conversation. You're, you're thinking of gold, and that's fair. That's what rogues do. He's not nope. actually thinking of gold. Uh, he's been anything in particular. Just that this box needs to be opened. <laughs> well, sure enough. There does appear to be some gold within said chest. Uh, you'd have to get a little bit closer to take a, a good inventory, though. Mm. Uh, anything that's not gold, he'll pick up with the mage hand and just set outside the box. There is. There is actually just um, near the surface. It's sort of covered with coins, but you could mage hand it out. Very interesting object, and it appears to be glowing. It is a sphere with sort of <coughs> glowing glyphs on it. It's very small. It's only the size of maybe a baseball, but it is clearly magical in nature. Mm. And the color of those runes appears to be... Uh, just take <laughs> it appears to be very, oh, very unique item. You've never... Um, you don't you don't know what it is, but um, oh, it is um, it is sort of a bluish green. Uh, the runes do they appear to be any in any language? You're gonna have to bring it real close to take a look if that's the case. Mm. I I may hand it up so that I I don't actually touch it, but I do bring it close. Okay. So you bring it close, and um, it appears to be, believe it or not, um, a very um, interesting language. You, I don't think you can read or write giant, but you're pretty confident it could be giant, actually. Let me check if uh, Ketia's giant. Uh, yeah, I actually had to check myself if I speak giant, because I speak all sorts of weird language. Uh, well, I speak like goblin, orc, and undercommon, so... Yeah, you're pretty confident that it's giant, but you can't tell what it says. Very interesting item, this uh, this sphere. Bring it over here. I can read it. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe it can help you somehow. And I mage hand it uh, over. <laughs> yeah, I could do Pass a it from uh, one mage hand to the other mage hand. Give me one second. I'll tell you why. Yeah, but mine's cool because it's invisible. How many mage hands do we have? Good God. Everybody has one except for... Yeah, I have, I have a wizard. Um, ritual. Comprehend languages. So oh. It's, oh, it's, interesting. Yes. Uh, it would take, if you're going to cast it as a ritual, it takes a good 10 minutes, though. Yeah, all right. Just, well, if, I'll just put it here. Spot, then... We're going to be taking a long rest anyway. Yeah, so about the long rest, here's the thing. You guys started off in the morning um, heading from the Old Owl Well. You left quite early and you arrived about midday. You had a vicious battle with um, some um, Warforged. And that took it into early afternoon. And um, now it's about late afternoon, so... There's still a couple hours before you guys can get a long rest in your qualify. Mm. I mean, after two battles, I think we're probably pretty worn out. Yeah, I think it's long rest just now. It's either no, do you want to take a long rest down on a well, or do you want to take a long rest? Up I well? I think he's saying that he's going to be stricter about the one long rest for twenty four hour period thing. Yeah, I've been pretty loose. I mean, you, you've been able to take it whenever, but probably you're going to have to wait till a little bit later in the evening to qualify for the long rest to start. Is that cool? 
as creepy right. as this area is, I think it would be best to be down here. Because yeah. it's out of the way. It's in a well. Nobody's going to expect it. And we could put up the, uh, Rigel could put up the, uh, the dome. Rigel can put up the dome. Ah, uh, yes. The right uh, Leoman's tiny so hut. So, Volt, you take a little bit of time casting your comprehend languages. And it appears that the runes in giant of all languages read um, basically a few very simple words. It says in giant, orb of the Stein rune. What? Orb of the Stein, like S T E I N, rune. It's a good one. I've never even heard of, never heard of it. It is a I very know. unique, obscure magical item. It's but, from um, Stork. It's from Storm King's Thunder. It actually is from Storm King's Thunder. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably what you need to. Yeah, uh, I happen to know what this item does. Eh, kind of just well, vague. You can take another ten minutes and know for sure if you wish to cast identify. Oh, that's get so, you. Yeah. Before I do that, though, can you check the message that I sent you on Discord? Leo, oh one? shoot! Yeah, sorry. Now you're good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see it now. Okay, cool. So, um, do you wish to cast the identify? Uh, yeah. All right, and the rest of you, you, t- you do a thorough search of the room, and there's really nothing else of value. However, Adrian, uh, you're uh, not quite worried about the chest anymore, and you do a full count of the gold, and uh, this is how much is inside the chest. There's some other uh, vestments and fine clothing, but nothing else of value. Within the chest, you find um, 290 gold pieces. And there is also um, 155 silver. So 155 silver and um, that much in gold, 290. Who's putting it in the party loop? I'll put it in. You put it in. And remember, this is one year after the giant war. So uh, this is a very fitting item. Are you ready to finish the identify ceremony? Yes. You complete the identify, and the results of which are as follows. Uh, Bailey, do you mind doing the honors? Now, I'm going to be honest, it's a little bit wordy, so if you want to share uh, responsibility of reading out, be my guest. It is I got wordy. it. That's not that bad. Um, let me just make it a bit larger here. This orb of granite is about the size of an adult human's fist. The Stein Stone rune appears on it in the form of crystalline veins that run across the surface. The orb has the following properties, which work only while it's on your person. As an action, you can... Oh, it does require a tournament, too. Um, as an action, you can channel the orb's magic to hold you around for the next minute or until you move any distance, you have advantage on all checks and saving throws to, revert, to resist effects that force you to move. Oh, okay. In addition, any enemy that moves to a space within 10 feet of you must succeed on a DC-12 strength saving throw or be unable to move any farther this turn. Okay, so uh, interesting uh Sentinel-esque ability there. Uh, You can't be petrified. That's nice. You can cast Smell from the Stone as a bonus action. Once you use the property, you can't use it again until you finish a long or short rest. It's this gift of stone. You can transfer the orb's magic to a non-magical item, a shield or a pair of boots, uh, by tracing the Stein rune there with your finger. The transfer takes eight hours of work, requires the two items to be within five feet of each other. At the end, the orb is destroyed, and the rune appears in silver on a chosen item, which means benefit, which means benefit based on its form. Shield. The shield is now a rare magic item and requires a two minute while you wield it. You have resistance to all damage dealt by ranged weapon attacks. Ooh, okay. Oh, ranged weapon attacks, not ranged. Mm-hmm. The pair of boots is now an uncommon magic item that requires a two minute while you wear the boots. You have advantage on strength saving throws and you can use your reaction to avoid being knocked prone. Eh. Yeah, the shield for yeah. sure. The shield is good. Um, Meld into stone is. Uh, I think okay. that's the best. No. Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, so this is a little bit of a confusing item. So that last part, Gift of the Stone, is where you permanently transfer the magical properties of the Stein rune into either a shield or boots. And then if you choose not to do that, then you go with the rest of it above. Does that make sense? Right. Hmm. Pretty interesting item. So if you want, if we wanted to make Ryan immune to or resistant to all ranged weapon attack damage, we could. Damn it, Leo! You're making this really hard on me. Does that uh, require a tune? Melt into also, stone. I also have the uh, double bladed scimitar too that I just got. The double bladed scimitar is that? <clears throat> It's finesse. Oh. It doesn't have to be. It is not finesse, unless you take a feat to make it finesse. It's, I thought it's a, it's a finesse item. The, fine, the finesse allows you the ability to use dexterity, but you don't have to. It just allows yeah. you to. I mean, like I think for instance, need, like for instance you a... can use a dagger that's finesse, but you can still use strength. Uh, the double bladed mm. scimitar has the special and two handed properties. Yeah, I'd have to lose right. my shield, but I would get like three attacks with it essentially. Mm, it is. If you can get something that is damage on every attack, that's very good. Yeah, it's a plus like, eight to hit, and, I'm, and the minimum damage right now is the way that Ryan stands at the moment. Minimum damage on each hit would be nine. And if you have yeah, something like, if you if something like uh, enlarge reduce is cast, well, you would have haste. Like he's going to eventually get haste, so oh. you would yeah. have like an insane amount of attacks. So we can discuss this later. I have something that uh, Leo uh, okayed with. Uh, I come back down or after I cast the identify, I guess. Um, you guys might hate me for this, uh, but go ahead and show yourself. Who? Oh. Go ahead. Do you want me to do it or you? Oh, oh motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> this was all Bailey's idea. I had nothing to do with it other than uh, doing some negotiating. Go ahead, this, Bailey. This motherfucker? Happy, yes. Yes. Uh, Toll, if you don't mind stepping forward real quick. I made a deal to get a remove curse for you. Oh, well, thank you. What did you do to get this deal? Uh, his servitude to me is now, uh, no longer. He's been around us this entire time, just invisible. Oh, wow. Are you sure? I already made the deal. It's locked. You either accept it or not. <laughs> I will accept it, my friend. Wow. Des giggles. <laughs> this was quite amusing. This whole thing has been quite a joy. It's been a hundred years since I've had this much fun. And as promised... Des, he's gotten the okay from his boss. He does not report to um, the big guy that starts with an A. He reports to somebody a little bit lower. He reports to Zariel. I think that's her name, Zariel? Yep. Yeah, yeah Zariel. It's either, I mean, there's only two female de arch devils, I think. She's Zariel on the cover of Descent of Avernus, that one. Yeah, Zariel. There you go. <laughs> the only one that only can be appropriate, at least, put on the cover. <laughs> As promised, Dez, he has received the remove curse spell gifted to him from Zario after doing a quick negotiation with Kefia. Well, here goes nothing. And then he puts forth his hand, and he's going to try to touch you, Volts. Is this okay? Yes. Very well. He reaches out and gives you a little tap. And immediately, you all see the black marks that covered the, your neck where you had been bitten remove instantly. Gone. Wow. Des looks back at you, Ketvia. Well, 
It's been a short ride, but it has been fun. Let me tell you. <laughs> it was a good deal. And I thank you. Maybe you should explain to your friends what happened back there at Old Owl Well. <laughs> and then he disappears. Poof, just like that. So I oh. did hear something in the... <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> I was a little bit worried because I heard uh, somebody mentioned, I forget who, but th that we were going to release, that they were going to release it in the morning. I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> It was me. I said we should go down and kill it. Or that. Some, it was something. Glad you didn't kill him now. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> the thing you wanted wow. to kill ended up possibly saving your life. Now, for yeah. humor's sake, would we have had the time for the long rest, Leo? I would have had Paul roll for it. No, I'd rather have the chance. <laughs> or rather not have the chance. My bad. I had it all planned out, but I was not expecting your uh, request, uh, Bailey. Well done. The role? Yep. Did you did you want to see what would have happened, Paul, or not so much? Yeah, let's 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 do it. What what was the role? The role was going to be generous. This is what I had in mind. It's an eight hour long rest, right? Yes. At the beginning of that eight hour long rest, I was going to let you roll. Get this: two d four plus four. As long as that number was eight or higher, then you would have had the long rest. You could have cast the cure wounds right away and then done. If that number was like seven hours or less, that's it. You are Steam a damn here. Three on the two dice. You want to roll? Uh, you did. Yeah, I so got it anyways. Dead. I got six. Uh, you would have, no, you would have got it. Six plus four is ten. Yeah. You would have had plenty of time. Uh, yeah, but that's make believe. Right. This is yeah. just for humor's sake. I'm not even gonna ask Captain Joe how you got that how you got Des to follow you. Well, I mean Thank it's you. always it's always a good idea to have a favor in the back pocket. That's not an explanation. And I I will have to talk with you in private. For, well, actually, no, I won't. Unless, of course, you wish to join the Zentar. If you wish to join the Zentar, then I will have to have a very long discussion about the terms of that deal. Oh, yeah, no. Kepia is not, most definitely not going to join the Zentar. He's going to get in his little TARDIS after all this is done and poop off. <laughs> Let's just say uh, Kepia is a very intelligent character, and he was not going to sell his soul for uh, anything. So oh, let's just leave it at that. Yeah, he's not dumb like Strings. <laughs> <laughs> well, Strings, I wouldn't say he's dumb. He's uh, more of a risk taker, I guess. Strings was crazy and impulsive. Yeah. In so, any event. It, so are the bodies still there? Yeah, the bodies are there. Um, you are now able to take the long rest if you want. Um, this was probably one of the <laughs> toughest, most interesting battles you've fought so far. So you have earned your long rest as evening sets in. The oh, Liaman's oh. tiny hut is placed just perfectly on top of the uh, well. So, um, I'm just a little worried about the vampires coming back to life, so I'm just going to pour my holy water on them. <laughs> I mean, or or can can we make an arcana check to see if anybody knows anything about vampires? Um, your passive arcana knows that they're pretty dead, but if you want to put them in a coffin or something just to get them out of sight, you could do that. Yeah, let's do that. Um. Should we break apart this little table and uh, shove a couple of stakes in their chest just to make sure? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to do that. Sure, yeah. You would definitely think that would be a safe idea. <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely put them in the same line. Off. All right, stake through the heart. And now you are quite confident you can rest at ease. We check both uh, coffins, right? Yeah, you checked all the coffins, the rest of the room. All there was was that chest and that interesting item, the rune, Stein rune orb. Yeah. Stein orb. Yeah. 
it's I'm I'm not sure how good it is for a player item, but it is actually pretty fun to use as a NPC item. I don't think I would. I don't think I would. Uh, you know, use the boots or the shield. I mean, it's I definitely wouldn't okay. use the boots because that just seems useless in my opinion. Shield is kind of okay, but going through walls, I think, could be really well. It could be go interesting and, go, in a battle. Go and walls, read. But... Read. Go ahead and read the the meld with stone spell. It's probably not exactly what you think. Yeah, you yeah can it's go okay. Through walls, but you can't perceive. You can't see anything out of them or anything. Yeah, it's okay. But you know the other um, the other stuff is pretty okay as is. If you were to just simply attune to it, um, yeah. with or the shield, the shield is an option. But anyways, it's one of those items that um, is is more interesting. I think you don't get to move around in the stone you meld into. You have to sit in one five foot square. Yeah. So let me ask another question. Uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm not going to tune to it. Somebody wants it. Um, the the big thing with it though is, meld with stone lasts for eight hours. So. That's... Yeah, but if you're in battle, like if you're getting clocked, you could. I mean, and you're in the right situation, you could. Go you can underneath. Just, yeah, and you and... can continue concentrating because it's not concentration either. That is true. Yeah, you could go. Well, you could just go sink underneath and then come back up. That would have been perfect of, for Rigel, just to slow and then disappear. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Something like that, or you know, whatever. I will something, not something. make that decision for him. Nt can make that decision on his own. Yeah, no, I agree. But I just that, that might be a good idea, or if somebody else is concentrating on something that's very necessary, then again, you need okay. to plan for it because the two. But yeah. Yeah, if, for sure. If you put the stone the, as a shield form, do you still get all the other abilities? No, it, I believe it just replaces. So it's basically three magic items that you get to choose which one it is. Because Indomitable Stand is like the best one of all of them. The, uh... Yeah. It is pretty good. It's... And remind me about the familiars before you take this long rest. Uh, Ray is alive. What about Laverne and uh, Orion? Both dead. Both dead. Okay, so at the end of the long rest, you have fully rested, and you regain full hit points, and maximum um, spell slots have been refueled. Do any of you choose your familiars before you head out? Uh, let me check real quick how oh. many components Rigel has on him. Let me ask, um, what about my, my total hit points got removed? Oh, uh, yes. Those are restored after your long rest. I believe they might technically be restored by the remove curse as well, but I'm not positive about that. Either way, you have been restored to maximum hit points. Morning sets in after your long rest, waiting in the evening to complete it. You are free to move about as you climb out of the well. What do you uh, choose to do next? Yeah, Rigel's going to use two f find familiar components. Both him and uh, both Orion and Laverne come back. How generous. He has paid <laughs> for your familiar. <laughs> yeah, he is oh, also gosh. my... He, he is also... I am also his superior. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Roll port. Yes, does he have a thing for that? Oh, well, are we going to continue? Because it's like 9.15. I don't know. Typically, we go another 45 minutes. I don't know. I feel like that was a pretty stressful fight. And we, uh, based on how much we talked at the end, that we might just be done. It's up, for, it's up to you guys. Uh, the, yeah. what, I mean, what's, uh, I'm good with we, we can make the trek to the dragon. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Was there any um, need to go back to Fandolin? I'm thinking <coughs> there might have been. I'm just trying to remember. Uh, oh, just we, we need to... curse, possibly. Uh, the need. Oh, wow. Okay. Those are good for using on the enemy. Oh, well, there's actually the collection of the, um, the reward for both Wyvern yep. Tor and Old Owlwell. And uh, there was a possibility that uh, your old friend might be coming 
At some point now, back from Waterdeep, Sildar from the Lord's Alliance. Not only that, we need to see if the uh, if the uh, mine is uh, up and running. Maybe we have some uh, monies from that. Uh, I mean, it's only been a few days. I doubt oh, that. Yeah, okay, that's true. Well, uh, oh, uh, you don't have to do that, Saber. He has a place to store his portent rolls already. Oh, he does? Okay. Well, I'm just going to I mean, it's good to have it, just so it's like those also, are the new ones. Also, he's probably going to have to roll new ones, yeah. He might have um, to roll it again, yeah. actually, because the trek back to Fandolin takes um, about a day anyway, so... Well, actually, I was thinking, um, where is the wyvern? Do we know? Because if Fandolin's on the way, might as well go there. Uh, um, we know it's, it's like up near Thunder Tree. Hmm. Yeah, it's like which, here. which considering we do not want to go through the forest, right? Yeah, let's I mean, go. We can do a pit stop at Fandolin and try yeah, to the high road. Yeah, maybe buy a couple of things to help with the dragon. You want to avoid Neverwinter? Forgot about that. For a second. Yeah, we can't go in Neverwinter. It's a terrible Neverwinter plague, is a mysterious forest. pestilence in Neverwinter. Say we go to Fandolin, and that's where we end. Then next week we'll pick up. Uh, no, because we're not playing next week. We're not. I thought you. I thought you wanted to take next week off because of. Uh... I don't know. I'm good. I was just asking. We were just talking about it. Okay. I'm down for next week. I'm good. Oh. Yeah, I'm good for whatever. I'm, I'm doing my uh, deck. I gotta re spend a million dollars on a freaking deck. Of course. Wood is so damn expensive, but it needs to get done. Try, try a roof. You got to treat that deck. You got to put the uh, ceiling. Dude, I did. You do it every two I years. I did. I do. It just, uh, you know, fair enough. after a while. Well, anyways, uh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. We'll probably pause for now, and then if everybody's good for next week, we can uh, get Inti all caught up. Yeah. Quite a um, bit went down this session, I must say. Missed a good one. Wow. Gee. Oh, I thought you were going to kill us all, Leo. <laughs> I thought we were all dead. <laughs> I, honestly, that one was the toughest, I think, encounter that you guys have fought. And um, it could have been a coin flip if the roles were just a little bit different, I think. I don't know. Really? That flame skull. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I would say this is tougher. This, this would have been tougher, I think. No, I think this one was more touch and go than the flame skull was. Yeah, it was pretty uh, dicey. It, it might have been slightly in favor of them, actually, this fight, I think. Mm, yeah. Because if that wizard had uh, been charmed, and uh, like you said, it could have been bad if he didn't go into the... Uh, the oh, it would have been It would have been amazingly bad. <laughs> well, and the other thing is, uh, you know, my uh, spirit guardian never went down, so it was yeah. continually putting that Radiant damage on it, so they weren't regenerating. Yeah, I can't I remember if I got you to roll any con saves. Maybe one. I don't think yeah, I hit like you one, too much. Yeah, one or two. But all yeah, right, guys. Yeah, Good later. session, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Because if Rigel well, had put down, if Rigel had been charmed and put down a slow, he still yeah. had three. He still had three charges on the mind sharpener, so we weren't taking down concentration. Oh, nice. <laughs> How many spell oh, slots wow. did he have left? He had a third level and oh, nice. I think a first level. Nice. It would have been really bad though. If you also had the Pearl of Power and the spell regeneration. Uh... Oh, he had those? Huh? He had those? Yeah, he had, bo he had both. Uh, I have a spell regeneration, uh, what should I call it? Attunement. Uh, yeah, I know what you yeah. mean. Yeah. All right. See you guys next time. All right. Later. See you later. Yep. Yeah, it's ring. I, was, I was hoping he was going to give me something with the uh, uh, lightning, something that does lightning damage. Ah, he didn't have any portents. He used them both on the Lord of Blades fight. Yeah. One for one to make him fail a save, and one to succeed on the uh, counter spell check. Yeah, I wonder, nice. and if you bat an eye when I use the once per day uh, misty step. I, 
wait. Huh. Yeah, I um, didn't notice that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, I, when I posted it, I'm like, oh crap, that says once per day. I hope they don't notice. <laughs> wow. I now like add a character. I just thought you had Oops. Misty Step. I don't think uh, artificers have access to it. I don't know. Um, so do you do you keep the Misty Step? Yes, I do. I don't that's, remember if Therese had Misty right. Step or not. I know he had Misty Step. I just don't remember yeah, I think how he through got wizard it. Level, though. Uh, he got Misty Step from a spell book. Yeah. But that was but... because he was a wizard. Yes, was... uh, classes are uh, Sorcerer, Warlock, and Wizard. Huh. So he must have got it from when he was a wizard, though. And also the Circle of Land, uh, Coast, the Oath of Ancients, Oath of Vengeance, and Oath of the Open Sea. Okay. According to D&D Beyond, so it might be a little bit more. Well, but... he also might have gotten it from the Elf uh, feature for Fey Ancestry or something like that. Are you guys going to be no. hanging around for a little bit? No. Uh, I, know, I, know there's an elf, I know there's an Elf feature where you can have it. That... Yeah, but that's something special. That's a, um, that's a specific yeah. sub-race of elf. Okay, what were you saying, Paul? Sorry? All right, anyways, I was going to say, you guys going to be hanging around for a little bit? Yeah. No, yeah. No, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. All it's right. really nice. I'm going to shut down this computer. Well, I'm going to go to my other computer. Um, so I'll, I'll be back on in a few minutes. Although tomorrow is the first time I have to get up at 3.30 in the morning again. Quick, before it gets back, everybody leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, so... <laughs> We're, you're going to have a couple things to clip in this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I got my work cut out for me, so I'm going to be here while doing that. Uh, all right, everybody. So um, they're out for Discord for now. Um, so, yeah, pretty crazy fight there um, with the vampires. I were trying to uh, get the hell out of there, but... That didn't happen, so um, we end up having to fight it out. I think the big thing about um, saving that kid would have put Ryan's mind to ease, because um, Ryan being a lawful good paladin, <coughs> yes, he's a he did creature stuff, but yeah, it's it's kind of uh, that that been kind of rough. That, that was that was really rough on that. Um, but anywho, so that was pretty cool that we survived. Unfortunately, Inti missed it, so uh, Inti, sorry about that. Hope you enjoy the uh, <laughs> the replay of this. Uh, which, again, for those that uh, missed the live stream, we live stream this every uh, Friday night right on my Twitch. Uh, that's Saber Wolf Gaming, two M's on that. Every uh, Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and if you watch the VODs, my VODs are available the next day at 6 a.m., uh, Eastern, just to make sure that the entire uh, the entire feed is rendered into HD, and uh, that way you have the full uh, non-blurry quality of this. And also, let me know um, with this layout I have here, or you want to go to my uh, more DM layout, which was a little bit bigger, that you can see everything a little better. Um, if you want me to go back to the DM layout I had last week, uh, let me know in the comments below, and make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Um, it helps me out. I want to get back into getting back up to that 5,000 subscribers, and I need 50 followers on Twitch uh, to really get some cool stuff going for for everybody. And um, I do have, I am gaining uh, special uh, Prime uh, codes for various uh, games sometimes, so I will I can actually hand those out to you all uh, if you are all interested. Once we get the ball rolling on these uh, subscriptions and everything, I can do special giveaways like that. Um, so I hope you guys are interested in that, too. Um, but anywho, uh, I'm going to wrap this up, and because it looks like I have a lot of stuff to cut for the uh, Friday Night Dice highlights. I do have a separate uh, playlist of just special highlights, special events that happened within the campaign stuff. So if you want to just um, see some cool just D&D moments that might happen, um, that you can watch that series, too. And maybe it take you a fancy to watching the uh, entire podcast. And these, these are more podcasts. I know it's kind of rough looking at just one still screenshot on there uh, but this is more of a podcast like you know critical role of those 
uh, the more people talking and acting your house. So you can also just play this in the background on YouTube, just play it in your car as you're going to work, whatever. All right, so that will wrap it up for the night. Um, so next week uh, looks like we're going to have another uh, week. I might, I might only have one or two weeks left of, uh, of my Final Fantasy VI, so the randomizer series. Um, if, if they are going to have the last couple of weeks be um, – uh, kind of be like a playoff series, kind of like NASCAR, where the where the batches are limited down on people. I am pretty much next to dead last on that. Um, I'm better at commentating than I am at playing. I still have I'm still over menu and stuff, so that's fine. I enjoying it. I prefer commentating. So if you want to listen to the commentation portion uh, that'll be happening in later weeks. That'll be on Thursday nights over on the FF6 Rules Collide on Twitch. And those VODs are available, on, I believe, on YouTube later on. Um, but yeah, uh, that'll do it for tonight. Thank you for joining us, and uh, have a good day.